This is an overview of an Apple Macintosh Plus desktop computer. Now, for those of you who didn't see my previous video on this machine where I unboxed it, um, I actually got this machine uh, off eBay uh, for only 20 bucks. Now, for the 20 bucks I paid for it, uh, it was a broken machine. I have fixed it, and I actually intended to make a repair video uh, on it, but I, I kind of forgot to do that. So, yeah, I just ended up repairing it. Uh, just without making a video so it is fully working now but I will explain what I did to fix it but before I do that let me just go ahead and show you what it came with now for the $20 I paid I got the machine itself of course uh, I got the original keyboard with it um, and I also got this box uh, that contains all the original floppy disks and uh, the guided tour cassette tape which is actually still wrapped in shrink wrap which is kind of cool so yeah I got that uh, the original floppy disks. Um, under this, I actually also got uh, the original manual and the unpacking guide for this machine. You can see it right there. And uh, I also got an external uh, 800K floppy drive. Now, here it is right here. I actually took it apart, but um, I will explain what I or why I did that in just a minute. But here's the bottom of it. You can see uh, that it is an 800K external drive. Uh, so yeah, uh, that is all what came with the machine. So um, let me just go ahead and give you an overview of it. Or actually, before I do that, let me just go ahead and explain uh, what was wrong with the machine and uh, what I did to repair it. So when I initially got the machine, uh, you would basically, if you turned it on, uh, it would turn on and start to boot, but no image would appear on the display. Now I actually figured out that that was due to bad solder joints on the analog board because when you uh, move the machine or, or hit it on the side that has the analog board, which is this side, uh, the screen would flash and flicker and you'd see a little bit of an image appear uh, in those times it would flicker. So that was uh, pretty much sure fire uh, uh, indication that it was indeed uh, bad solder joints on the analog board. So I went ahead and opened it up and uh, touch those joints up. Uh, the ones that usually go bad and the ones that were bad on here were the ones that uh, hold the connector in that connects the uh, logic board to the analog board. So there's like a cable that plugs into the analog board uh, sort of in the middle of it and then it plugs into the logic board. So the connector that that cable plugs into on the analog board uh, had bad solder joints. And there was also some bad solder joints on I think it was a transistor too. So uh, yeah, I got all those touched up, and now the machine works pretty much perfectly fine. Now, there was also another issue that this machine had, and this is the reason I took apart that 800K floppy drive. Uh, it did also uh, have a bad floppy disk drive. Now, both the internal drive and the 800K floppy drive had an issue, but the internal one did not read disks at all. If you just put a disk in, uh, you can go watch the video and see what it does. But you can put the disk in, it starts making a really awful sound. Uh, it spins up the disk, like I said, making a really awful sound and just doesn't read it. Uh, it just tries to spit it back out. Now the issue uh, that both of these drives had was uh, they wouldn't eject disks. Now I did fix it, of course, on the good drive, which was the, which was originally the uh, external drive, but uh, the internal drive and the external drive are just the same drive, just in different caddies, of course. So, um, I ended up uh, taking apart both drives, and they both had the exact same issue. So if I go ahead and get the part that was broken, uh, it was of course the eject uh, motor assembly, uh, you can see it right here. Now this is the one from the internal drive that's dead, but um, you can see that one of the gears in it is completely screwed. Um, this same exact gear was bad on the other ones, or on the other drive. And if you look at the actual uh, gear assembly, you can see that the other three gears in there are white, whereas this one, for some reason, is yellow. And as you can see, it also has some green stuff on it, which is kind of weird. But, um, uh, and actually, I do have the other gear around here somewhere. Let me see. Yeah, here's the other gear from the uh, internal drive. Uh, as you can see, this one's in much better condition but still does have some missing teeth and it does have a slight crack in it which you can't really see and it also has that green stuff on it which is kind of weird but uh, yeah nonetheless uh, it turned out that these gears fail quite often 
and there is actually a company that makes replacement gears for these I guess because they just fail uh, so often so I actually ended up buying one of those now those were actually uh, unexpectedly pricey um, they go for like uh, $8 per gear and I think you can get like five of them for like I don't know like 30 or 40 bucks I can't exactly remember the price but I know the single one was eight dollars so that was definitely quite expensive just for a little gear but um, this company just makes the gears for these for these drives so that's quite nice to have uh, know that I can get a replacement fairly easily uh, so yeah that's basically the repair overview of the machine um, I did of course fix the motor in this drive and this drive is now 100% um, fully functional along with the rest of the machine. So this machine is now a fully uh, functional machine. So if you go ahead and take a look at the condition of the machine, you can see it's actually in pretty decent shape. Um, you can see that it is a bit yellow, but that's to be expected for a machine this old. But the main thing that uh, is in really good shape is the CRT. Now, if you take a close look at it in the light, uh, you can see that it has absolutely no burn-in whatsoever. And when it's on, it is extremely bright, and the image is uh, perfectly aligned and looks really, really sharp and nice. So this CRT is in really, really good shape. So uh, now let me just go ahead and give you an overview of the machine. So of course on the front here, all we have is the 9-inch, I believe, CRT and floppy disk drive. Uh, this is of course an 800K drive, as I mentioned. This machine only supports 800K drives. There was no version of it that contained a 1.44 meg super drive, and you can also not install one. Um, so under here, we have the keyboard connector, and the keyboard did come with the original connector attached to it. So you can see it right here. It looks like a standard phone cable, but um, in reality, the pinout of it is slightly different. So if you were to use a standard phone cable for one of these keyboards, uh, you would have to modify it slightly and solder some of the wires to uh, different wires to match the pinout of the original cable. So that just plugs into the back of the keyboard in the port there and plugs into the machine uh, right there. Now this is of course the extended keyboard, I guess you'd call it, because it does have the number pad. Uh, there is a more rare version of this keyboard that does not have the number pad on it and you actually um, could buy a separate uh, number pad that would basically it, it was like a pass-through you would connect uh, the keyboard to one of the of the uh, phone ports on it uh, I guess RJ or yeah RJ 11 ports is what they're called and you would plug a second cable from the other port into the machine so you basically had like a daisy chain uh, keyboard and numpad that plugged into the machine so that was quite an interesting way to do it so let's just go ahead and move that out of the way and we'll take a look at the mouse. Now, the machine actually did not come with the mouse. For some reason, the seller on eBay decided to sell the mouse in a separate listing, uh, as well as the Apple stickers that would have come with this machine, which I actually bought that listing. I actually uh, managed to win those Apple stickers for just $5. So those should be here pretty soon, and they were uh, the original ones that came with this exact machine. So I kind of had to get them since they were for sale, and I was the only bidder for 5 bucks. so... I pretty much got a good deal on those, and I'll add those uh, to the original uh, documentation and discs that came with it. So, we can take a look at the mouse. This is the model M0100. Uh, it's the second revision of the mouse with the uh, gray button. The original one actually had a white button, and it wasn't, um, it didn't actually uh, come out of the mouse. It was uh, level with the rest of the enclosure. And uh, like I said, it was a white button that matched the color of the mouse. Uh, I do actually like the look of this one a little bit better than that one. But uh, nonetheless, this is the second version of the mouse. And you can see the connector on the end is a DB9, or what is this, a DB9, yeah. It's a DB9 connector, and uh, it does have an Apple logo on it. And a way you can tell it, uh, if this mouse came with an original Macintosh or Mac Plus is the connector. Now the original Macintosh connector, now I, I'm not sure if the second version of the mouse had this connector or not, I'm pretty sure it did, but um, 
The connector is actually uh, perfectly square. It doesn't have these rounded edges. So that's how you can tell if it's a if it's an original uh, Macintosh mouse or one that came with a Macintosh Plus. So let's go ahead and flip the machine around to the back and we will go ahead and take a look at the ports. Let's get it around here. All right, so on the back of the machine, you can see we have the slot for the battery. And yes, it does have somebody's name on it, uh, as well as the keyboard. So yeah, I'll see if I can get that off with some rubbing alcohol or something, but it doesn't look like it's gonna come off very easily. So right here, we have the uh, space for the PRAM battery. Now this takes a special, or special, uh, I think it's a double A size, uh, battery, but it is not 1.5 volts as a standard AA battery is. Uh, it is actually, uh, I believe, 4.5 volts. So you can't really get these batteries anymore. Uh, I think there's a way you can make one out of multiple cells, but uh, I don't exactly know the details behind that. But if I do ever figure out how to do it, uh, I will definitely uh, give that a shot. So let's go ahead and put the cover back on it. Uh, below that, we have the power switch. Uh, below that, the uh, IEC power input. Um, uh, as for the ports on the logic board, we have the printer and modem serial ports there, a SCSI port there, uh, the external floppy port there, uh, the external mouse port here, and the audio output there. And if you take a look at the sticker on the back of the machine, uh, you can see the details of it. Now, this machine does indeed have one megs of one megabyte of RAM installed. Uh, it has not been upgraded to four megabytes, so it still only has one meg and cannot run a uh, multi-finder comfortably at least. So um, let's just go ahead and flip the machine back over and I'll actually do that off camera and I'm gonna go ahead and get it hooked up and I'll go ahead and turn it on and we'll play some games which are on the floppy disk I made for it. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have just gotten the machine hooked up to a keyboard and mouse and got it plugged in and ready to be powered up. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Now I'm actually gonna pause the video here once again and just, just so I can turn off the light, so I'll be right back. All right, so let's just go ahead and power on the machine. And as you can see, the screen came up and is working perfectly. So it is now asking for the floppy disk. So I will go ahead and insert it. Now, this is not a original Macintosh Plus disk, but rather a Macintosh Utilities disk. And I actually have a whole um, a whole box full of these uh, Macintosh branded disks with different utilities on them. However, they have been formatted and do not contain their original contents. So I went ahead and just used one uh, to put um, some games in the operating system on. So I believe I put system 6.0.2 or 6.0.3 on this. So let's just go ahead and insert it. As you can see, it is now booting off the floppy. And the machine has booted up. So let's just go ahead into about this finder, or about the finder. So it is running uh, system 6.0.2. And as you can see, the total memory is 1024 kilobytes, which is of course one megabyte. So let's just go ahead and close this. And since it has no PRAM battery installed, um, I have to change my mouse settings on every boot so it's not super slow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so let's just go ahead and open this floppy disk. And I might need to get something else to track this mouse on because it doesn't track very well on this surface. So as you can see, I have a couple games installed or on the floppy disk. I have just some uh, Brick Breaker game, uh, Centipede for Macintosh, 
uh, Glider, Let's Get Tanked, Back Bugs, uh, Missile 2.3, I forget what exactly that's called, and I have Stunt Copter on there. So I'll give a couple of, a couple of those games a bit of a, a playthrough here. So let me get something I can put this mouse on real quick. Let's get this. I'll be right back real quick. Let me see if I can find something better to track this mouse on. Alright, so I got a new uh, book to put this mouse on, and as you can see, uh, it tracks much better. So, um, let's just go ahead and start out with a pretty classic on the Macintosh, uh, Mac Bugs. Alright, so we'll go ahead and start a game. And basically all you do in this is just go around and just shoot like little Macintosh uh, icons. See, I'm not the best at this. Alright, so I just won one level, so uh, let's go ahead and quit that. And as you can see, whenever you quit anything, uh, it has to reload Finder because, of course, uh, multi uh, keeping Finder open while uh, running other applications is if you use MultiFinder, which can't comfortably work on this machine because it only has um, one megabyte of RAM. So let's just go ahead and open a new game. I'll go ahead and open up Stunt Copter because that's a pretty fun game. I actually kind of forgot how to play this. Let me see if I can figure it out. Oh yeah, that's right. So yeah, I guess all you do is drop uh, these pair these guys in the helicopter into the back of that cart. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and quit that. All right, so yeah, that's. That's a few games for you. I'm, I'm just going to end it there. So yeah, that is the uh, overview of this Apple Macintosh Plus. So let me just go ahead and shut it down here. And you can see uh, the floppy disk drive eject. Alright, so I just went ahead and turn the light on. But yeah, let me just go ahead and shut the machine down. And as you can see, uh, the eject motor now works perfectly fine and it is telling me that it is now safe to switch off your Macintosh. So go ahead and do that. So that is an overview of this Apple Macintosh Plus desktop computer. Hope you enjoyed this video.